1866, a fierce group of Irish nationalists that immigrated to the U.S. and battle-hardened by its brutal civil war, would launch a vicious attack on Canada in a desperate plea for independence in Ireland. And I hope you guys enjoy this story. It's definitely a lesser known one, but I consider it to be a really pivotal moment in both Canadian and Irish history, as well uh, the overall history of the United States. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you know any stories similar uh, to the one I'm telling today, definitely leave it down in the description below. So our story begins today all the way over in good old Ireland. Uh, in the 1850s, where there was actually a horrible famine going on that was sweeping through the entire nation. This famine would have long-lasting effects on the world, uh, even today. And I would say this story definitely has a lot to do with one of those effects. Because during this famine, a man named John O. Mahamey, uh, he would form a group known as the Fenan Brotherhood, which were a group that sought independence from Great Britain at the time. Uh, due to how they handled the famine situation going on in Ireland. And factions of the Fenan Brotherhood would actually make it over to the United States in a big wave of immigration uh, when people were trying to flee this famine. But by 1865, uh, the Brotherhood factions in Ireland had all but been dismantled because Britain had controlled the territory with an iron fist. The situation in the United States, though, was a completely different story. The Fenan Brotherhood were able to flourish over there, and uh, their numbers actually grew to almost 14,000 members. And all of them were veterans from the United States Civil War, some of them being from the Confederate side and others being from Union. Majority of them would fight for the North during the conflict, but this didn't really matter to them because, like I said, they shared a neutral interest in the plight going on back in Ireland. And because the situation continued to worsen back home, uh, the United States faction decided to take matters into their own hands. They were going to invade England's North American territories in order to, uh, to line up some sort of discussion in maybe getting Ireland its own independence from them. And the British, they took these threats very seriously. They already had several British garrisons stationed in Canada at the time, but they would also rally another 14,000 militia. And a pretty sizable fleet of about 13 uh, steamboats in order to properly guard the Canadian border from this invasion. The Fenans, they would launch their first attack in March 1866. They attacked a port in New Brunswick, but it failed. Uh, they were repelled and it pretty much only resulted in a couple of shops and buildings being damaged. And the United States would actually take action on their return home. They would uh, hold and arrest them, but release them not too soon after, pretty much as just a show to England that they were trying to do something. The British were able to repel this attack, but they were actually still scrambling to place their troops all over the border to properly defend it. On June 1st, 1866, the Fenan Brotherhood would strike a key position. A general within the Fenan Brotherhood would lead about a thousand men from Buffalo over the Niagara River and capture the town of Fort Erie. John O'Neill actually fought as a cavalryman in Ohio and Virginia during the Civil War and was actually a decorated soldier. And the thousand men he would bring with him were well trained and also extremely well armed. They would carry an assortment of weapons from lever action rifles, revolvers, and even had access to a Gatlin gun with over 10,000 rounds. They ordered the townspeople of Fort Erie to help them craft positions to dig in and uh, for bakeries and other places to give them food and other supplies. They secured the telegraph station and railway track, seized horses from local farms to scout further inland, and unfortunately while seizing these horses, a group of Fenan Brotherhood men would actually kill a farmer during a verbal altercation. And it doesn't take much uh, imagination to see how that altercation would have went. He was probably just super pissed off that these guys were coming on his farm trying to take his horses. 
So the Fenan Brotherhood were actually stirring up a lot of trouble in the area already, and the British were scrambling to station any troops to get there to combat them. And they would, because Major Charles Gilmore was stationed in the area, and he led about 900 men uh, that belonged to uh, the Queen's Own Rifles, which was a local militia from York and its surrounding areas, which would go on to be called Toronto, uh, so pretty much a, just a division from Toronto. Major Gilmore would link up with Lieutenant Colonel Brooker, who was from the Caledonia Rifles, and a couple other companies uh, from the area like St. Catharines and Welland. And these guys were definitely brave, no doubt about that, but they had inadequate training for the time. Most of them were students or their occupation had absolutely nothing to do with being a soldier and majority of them pretty much had only fired the rifle once during their training period. And they were going up against battle-hardened veterans from, like I said, the U.S. Civil War, and these guys had access to a Gatling gun, which I don't even think most Canadians at the time wouldn't even have known what that was. To top it off, most of the Canadian soldiers had muskets that were used back in 1812. Regardless, the Canadians would move inland, and unfortunately, on June 2nd, they would make contact with the Fenan Brotherhood. Lieutenant Colonel Brooker and his men spotted a couple of Fenan Brotherhood soldiers on top of horses, and these men on top of horses were actually lookouts uh, because around them was an extremely well dug in position. Lieutenant Colonel Booker would mistake these men for cavalry, and he would push out an order to form a square, which is a defense position where soldiers line up in a square. Uh, that way, cavalry, when they're pushing around, can't get into the middle of them and break them apart. And this was a fatal mistake. It left them completely spread open. The veteran Fenan soldiers would unleash a fury upon the Canadians killing and wounding multiple of them in the first couple of seconds of the battle. Brooker, he would see his mistake, but unfortunately, it was too late. The Canadians were panicking, some of them were already retreating, which left the ones that uh, stood their ground to hold the position pretty much virtually doomed. The worst part about it is there's actually a lot of depictions of this battle, but they're pretty inaccurate. Uh, they depict the Fenian Brotherhood in green jackets and the Canadians in red jackets. Both the opposing forces' uniforms were uh, kind of a dark gray or a darkish blue. They were really similar. So this left untrained Canadians uh, to mistake some lines of Fenian Brotherhood as friendlies and they would flee towards them just to get butchered. Once the gunfire settled down a bit, uh, the Fenan Brotherhood would actually also retreat uh, due to a fear of retaliation of a much larger force. The massacre, or the Battle of Ridgeway as it's called, would see nine Canadians killed in action and another 32 wounded, majority of whom would pass away from their wounds or further disease. The Fenan Brotherhood would also take casualties, but the statistics are a little wonky. Uh, with at least two to four of them being killed and uh, an unknown number of them being wounded. The Fenan Brotherhood, they would return to Fort Erie and they would prepare for an all-out attack. And fortunately, that Gatlin gun I was talking about never actually got to see any action because they had to leave it behind while they were retreating from the Battle of Ridgeway. Ships would drop off thousands of British and Canadian troops near Fort Erie. Large-scale skirmishes would erupt all over the area of Fort Erie. And during one of these skirmishes, the Fenan Brotherhood would capture around 36 Canadian militiamen, and this gave them an opportunity to negotiate and give them enough time uh, to retreat from the area. The Battle of Fort Erie would see another 16 Canadians wounded with another 4 killed, and the Fenan Brotherhood would actually take some pretty heavy casualties this time around as well, uh, having 9 men killed and another 14 wounded. As well, many of them were captured and imprisoned by the British, and John O'Neill on his return home to the United States was also arrested. The men who lost their lives in the Battle of Ridgeway are known as the Ridgeway Nine, 
And it's really sad because all of these guys were just temporary soldiers, militiamen uh, that were looking just to defend their country. With William Tempest, who was a 19-year-old from Toronto, and he just joined the militia because he wanted to make his family proud. He was going to university at the time. His father and his family studied medicine, and he was looking to follow in their footsteps. And his family were extremely proud of William, not only for uh, going to university following in their footsteps, but for joining the Canadian militia during uh, the country's, well, uh, the territory's time of need. And what's really odd is William Tempest, a couple of days before the Battle of Ridgeway, uh, was actually recorded in his diary and to other soldiers uh, having recurring dreams of him drowning or not being able to breathe or other really disturbing ones uh, where he would say devils were holding him down and slitting his throat. What's really, really creepy about this is during the Battle of Ridgeway, uh, a bullet uh, unfortunately whizzed by William's uh, neck and it severed his jugular and he was seen struggling on the battlefield for uh, a pretty long time unfortunately uh, clinging to life so these were almost like weird premonitions that he was having before uh, he was going to be involved in this conflict. And I read these stories a really long time ago and I've just always found them really eerie and and really creepy and at the same time really really sad uh, for William Tempest. Another man, Hugh Matheson, who worked in a local drugstore in Toronto, joined the militia because he had a pretty large family and wanted to support them and also just to make them proud of him. He was always seen writing back to his family, and he was originally from Nova Scotia, so he had already made a, a really long trek to better the lives of his family. But unfortunately, uh, Hugh was actually one of the first to be killed during the Battle of Ridgeway. Uh, he was struck in the heart uh, within the first couple of seconds of the conflict. All of the Ridgeway Nine have really, really sad stories, and uh, it's uh, really sad that this story is largely forgotten because their families had to go through a, a large amount of torment due to this, uh, this battle. And like I said before, a lot of the uh, soldiers that were wounded in the battle also ended up passing away. The Ridgeway uh, Nine is just the nine men that were killed in action. And the fighting that led into Fort Erie would also claim another large number of Canadian casualties. A lot of these men had amputations performed on them. Uh, there was even one man where his mouth was blown off during the fighting. So it was some pretty rough stuff they probably had to go through, not only um, with these injuries and just the pain, uh, also just uh, mental torment and what they had to go through on in society. And it was actually pretty sad for the Fenan Brotherhood as well. Um, they'd lost a, a, lar a good number of their men as well, and this didn't really help anything back home in Ireland. Um, if anything, it actually uh, intensified how brutal the British were towards uh, the Irish people. But this uh, engagement would actually help during uh, the Confederation of Canada. It was a, a large talking point to unify the country. And now that Canada was its own sovereign nation, one of their main priorities was having its own armed forces to defend its border against invaders. They had learned from their mistakes at the Battle of Ridgeway and Fort Erie because the Fenan Brotherhood were not finished with invading. John O'Neill was released from prison not long after uh, his incarceration, and he would go on to make further plans. He would launch numerous attacks all the way up until 1871, uh, but none of these were really effective and pretty much all of them were repelled and Canadian forces never took a single other casualty from the point of the Battle of Ridgeway. These Fenan Brotherhood attacks would actually leave the United States in a pretty uh, tricky situation. They themselves had already been embroiled in a pretty massive conflict with England in 1812. And in fear of worsening tensions, 
with uh, the British Empire uh, due to these attacks. They actually made numerous arrests on the Fenian Brotherhood uh, hierarchy and leadership, as well uh, making an arrest on John O'Neill himself. The Fenian Brotherhood had been given its official final blow, uh, and they officially disbanded in 1880. This ideology would not go away in Ireland, though. Uh, the Fenian Brotherhood are pretty much seen as the precursor to the IRA, which are still uh, very embroiled within the Irish uh, culture and society. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, it's a really forgotten one and more of an unknown one, that's for sure. The only reason I've actually heard of it is because this battle actually took place not too far from where uh, I grew up around. And uh, I think a lot of people, even from that area, don't know um, that this battle, uh, they know that took place, but I think they misconstrued it with it taking place in 1812. But in its own right is definitely a story that deserves to be told and I think is uh, overlooked in the overall history of, uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, Ireland, the United States, and Canada love to get comments from you guys so just comment anything down below uh ideas for more videos ideas for more story type videos even if it's bad comments i like to hear it all um try to make it more d uh, constructive criticism but anyways you guys have a good one and i'll catch you in the next video